Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to discuss starting a brand new sketchbook because I just picked up this Wonder Forest sketchbook. I will do a more in-depth review on this in a later video, so do keep an eye out for that. But we're going to talk about fear of the blank page. It's very real and it affects all artists. There is something uniquely intimidating about staring at a page of emptiness ready to be filled with possibilities and the endless possibilities can be paralyzing. Add to that it being the first page of a brand new book, the first words of a chapter of your artistic life, and it could be downright terrifying. This is normal and you're not alone. Over the years, I've developed a few different techniques that I use to start off a sketchbook, often using all of these techniques to fill the first few pages and break in the sketchbook, so I feel more comfortable using it. So let's jump into the first technique, the one that I always use to start my own sketchbook. So my favorite idea is to turn the first page into a start and end date page or a title page. This is what I do for all of my personal sketchbooks. Um, basically, I will decorate the page accordingly using a variety of media and letting my creativity flow. This is so helpful to me because it gives me a record of when I start and when I end the sketchbook, whether it takes me a few months or a few years. I always make sure to leave room for me to write the end date and have a space dedicated to that. And this is a really nice way to bookend your sketchbook if you like to do an end page. For this sketchbook, I'm starting with a little gouache painting. I recently learned a new technique for painting grass in gouache, so I wanted to go ahead and try that out. So that's what I did for the first page of the sketchbook. I taped the border because I wanted this nice clear white border that I was going to then put gold around, so you'll see me do that later. But I spent most of my time just building up this grass, but as you can see, I kept it relatively plain and simple. I'm putting in some trees now, but I'm leaving some room in the center. That's where I'm going to write my dates. You want to make sure that you leave plenty of room to write the start and the end date of your sketchbook. And I recommend writing the part that says like end and if you want to like 22202 or something like that, if you don't think it's gonna take more than a decade to finish um, since we're in the early parts of 2020, the 2020s, I like to do that so that it keeps things as consistent as possible and I don't have to write as much stuff when I get to the end and try to like match the color perfectly if I forget exactly what you know medium I use or try to match the writing or the lettering perfectly. So that's kind of what I do. I'm just building up the highlights on these trees right now so that they have a little bit more three-dimensionality and then adding in a little shadow. And then I take off the masking tape, which left a really nice clean line on this first page. But then I use some gold paint and put this nice gold line around it using the Polina Bright Rigor brush. And then I'm going to go in and add all of these cute little leafy details snaking around the little gold line. So for me, I'm kind of viewing this first page as like this little frame that's, um, looking into this little scene. Um, for other first pages, I've done things like scrapbooking, I've done collaging, I've done random abstract pages. Um, any of the next pages that I'm gonna talk to you about, you can use to create a base for your title page. So those are all gonna be really helpful for you if you are struggling on coming up with ideas for what to do for your title page. Any of these upcoming exercises that we're gonna talk about will create a great blank page for that start and end date. If you're like, oh, I don't want to paint a whole scene like how you, how she did like I just want to do something simple we're going to talk about that as well these are all great first projects that will help you relax and not stress your sketchbook should be a happy and comforting space space that brings you joy not stress so if your sketchbook is bringing you stress you need to reevaluate your relationship with it I find that mindless and loose exercises help to free my creative mind and break down any blocks that I have about a fresh page. So let's move on from this title page to some mindless exercises that you can do either for fun or just to create a base. The first one is to make a scribble page. I love scribble pages. Um, in order to create a skip scribble page, I start by picking up either a colored pencil or a watercolor pencil and scribble around on the page as you would imagine one would do. I usually use like two different colors. I add in more scribbles with other colors and wait for it to be filled up. And once it's all filled up, I start coloring in the little spaces created between the scribbles and the squiggles with watercolor, watercolor pencil usually. Sometimes I'll use colored pencil, but the medium that you use to fill this up is entirely your choice. You could use gouache, watercolor, acrylic if you wanted to. Whatever your favorite medium is, you can use that to fill in these little 
spaces. Um, this creates a really interesting abstract page. And like I said, it can be done with a variety of supplies and media. A lot of times I'll mix media in this. Um, I'll use color pencil and watercolor pencil and like acrylic markers. And you can also use drips to establish squiggled areas as well. So if you drip liquid paint onto the page and you like twirl and tilt the page around, you can create these squiggles with it. You can also use acrylic markers to do this. If you press, if you put the acrylic marker on the page and press down really hard, so that the uh, ink comes out really quickly. You can turn it and turn the page and it'll like run on the page and you can create these squiggles and just repeat that until you're satisfied with it and then fill in those gaps. So that's another really fun way to do a scribble page. Um, as you can see with this one, I'm just going through and filling in all the watercolor pencil, like adding water to it. I try to wait for each section to dry, like each section of color to dry before I go in with the color next to it to create and establish these hard uh, lines between them so they don't blend into one another. But if you want them to blend and bleed into each other, that's totally your choice too. And it creates a really cool effect as well. One other thing that I want to talk about with scribble pages, as you can see, I haven't filled in every single space. I've left white space. That's again, a choice. White space is definitely interesting and it's an important part of the composition. But if you want to fill the entire page up with scribbles and colors, then you absolutely can. Um, whether I leave white space or not just kind of varies depending on the colors that I'm using and the way the page looks. So it's up to you. Then I take off the tape and I am done. This would be a great start for a title page, um, but it's also a good way to just scribble and get things out and stop being so precious about your paper. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what I like to call a layered circle page. So basically for this, you're going to use a lot of repeating circles. This exercise will really loosen you up and it creates a really cool effect. So you're going to pick essentially one color, maybe two colors. In this case, I'm gonna use blue and green. Don't overcomplicate things because we wanna keep this simple and mindless. Pick an art supply in that color and start drawing circles and ovals. I tend to start with watercolor pencil. Add in various circles with different art supplies. I do recommend using a combination of water-based and non-water activated art supplies because then you can spritz the entire surface with water and some things will bleed and other things won't. And this creates a softer texture. So for this one, I've used watercolor pencils, I've used markers, I've used regular color pencils, I've used different types of pens, I've used pastel pencils, and then I'm spraying the whole thing with water and you'll see certain ones bleed out way more than others. And then I go back and repeat the process on a second layer after after I added water to that first layer. Um, and this creates a little bit more dimension and depth. So some great art supplies to use with this are watercolor pencils, colored pencils, watercolor crayons, pastels, acrylic markers, fine liners, and regular markers. The next exercise is watercolor circles. And this is a really, really simple exercise. You're going to take some water and a brush and you're going to start painting circles on your paper with water. You want the circles to slightly touch each other. And once you have a few on there, you don't wanna paint all of it cause then they'll dry. You want to start dabbing in, dropping in little bits of color. So I'm gonna drop color in right at each edge and I'm gonna do two colors per circle, if that makes sense. So I start by dropping those in, I'm using blue, purples and pinks for this and then I start adding in more circles using water and I'm going to make sure those circles touch the other circles so that all of that paint and those colors bleed together throughout the entire piece and I'm just going to keep adding circles um, in variety of sizes until I create a composition that I like and fill up most of the page just filling in those circles and adding in the color this is a really fun way to play with paint and to play with the way that the paint flows and the way that color works and it's very very mindless it's very very simple and it creates a really pretty effect once I'm done with it because I wasn't fully happy with it I wanted something a little bit spicier I went in with some colored pencils in purple and pink and just added some circles to it and that was pretty much it done you could again use this as a title page or just as an exercise but I think it comes out really really cute and I was happy with this one my next thing is to collage something. I love collaging. Um, I basically cover the entire page in watercolor or gouache or acrylic ink, something like that. For this exercise, I'm using some gouache. And then I start 
using for various stickers and papers and mixed media supplies to create an interesting composition. So for this, I did my background. I pulled out all of my stickers and my paper and things like that. And I started putting them down on the page, but I'm not sticking anything down yet because I want to create a pleasing and interesting composition first. So this takes a little bit of time. You're kind of getting out all of your different supplies, figuring out where everything is going to go. And once I have an idea of at least a couple things that are going in the background, I'll start sticking them on. I don't tend to plan out every single step of it first. I'll plan out like a few steps and then I'll put those on and then I'll plan out a few more steps and I'll put those on just cause it's a little less stressful for me. Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed if I'm trying to plan the entire collage out at one time. So I'll go like a couple steps at a time. Also, don't be afraid to cut up your stickers, tear paper, be creative with things. I really liked this one sticker, but I just wasn't vibing with it all at once. So I cut it into three pieces. I used both side pieces in here and then the center part that had um, some text in it, I also cut out and then used towards the end. So you can like kind of alter your stickers, cut things out, cut around them. So don't be afraid to do that with your stickers. Collaging sometimes can feel like I don't know, like a craft versus an art, I guess, but it's really fun and it is an art because all you're doing is you're focusing on color and composition and um, theme and things like that. You're focusing on that kind of stuff and it's important to create a good collage. You do need strong composition and things like that. Um, so it's a fun way to kind of practice composition, practice color, practice um, different artistic sensibilities without the pressure or stress of drawing anything. You can just focus on composition color and texture without worrying about anatomy or shading or perspective, um, which is really freeing, especially if you want to create something that's a little bit more visual, a little bit less abstract. You can also combine collaging with some of the pages that we've talked about so far, including the circle page and the scribble page. Both of those work great to combine with collage. So definitely recommend combining everything together. Um, Def, these exercises are not necessarily meant to be used one-on-one, -on -one, but in multiple different ways. So try combining them. The last thing that I like to do if you're really stuck and you don't even want to break out your art supplies is to make a sticker page. So similar to the collage page, we're just going to put stickers on here. Basically, we all seem to get those stickers that pile up year over year that we just don't throw away and don't know what to do with. Um, maybe they're not water bottle or laptop worthy and we're just out of space. So I will often use my first page or those first two pages that don't lay properly as a place to collect all the stickers I find over the course of my sketchbook. It serves as a record of what you've collected and where you've been. You can also spice it up by creating a simple textured watercolor background for behind your stickers. And with that, I have started my sketchbook and hopefully you have too. We were able to get through those first pages of the sketchbook using these techniques and now it feels worn in and ready to really dive into. I'll be back in a later video for a full review of the Wonder Forest sketchbook as I test out and work in it more. Remember, the blank page doesn't have to be intimidating. It is an open sea of possibilities, but don't allow that to intimidate you. Instead, allow it to inspire you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all the YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.